Welcome to Vlogmas Day 21. So as you can tell, it's going to be another collections video day. It is absolutely miserable out. It's pouring rain and it has been all day and I've been up since 4am. So this is what you get. You're also going to get one tomorrow um, because I'm going to see Star Wars after work immediately after and so I won't be home until it is dark. So I refuse to be on camera when my face will look that bad and I will have been up for that long. So you're getting two collections videos in a day but you guys seem to really like these. So that's okay. Um, today's is obviously my Penguin Black Spine. Once again, these are one of the quote-unquote ugly ones um, of my collection. Now, I did, I did get a commenter who said, oh, but they're not ugly, I really like them. And I do really like these. I'm not saying that they're ugly at all, but in comparison to things like the Penguin English Library or the um, Penguin cloth bound classics or the penguin drop caps, they're not really design oriented. Um, what I love about these is that they have fantastic notes. Um, I think that these are probably some of my favorite editions. I also love the Oxford World Classics for this kind of thing because they have tons of notes, they always have great translations, and they look really nice when they're stacked together. I'm a big fan of the way that these look on my shelves. So yes, I'm going to get started with this. So the first one, who's actually kind of a namesake for me, and that is Catherine Mansfield's The Garden Party and Other Stories. Um, my last name is Mansfield, so yes, in case you guys didn't know, so I, I feel a kinship to Catherine Mansfield. She's also a contemporary of Virginia Woolf. I haven't actually read too much of this. I think I read the first story in this. I was supposed to do a buddy read, and then the buddy read kind of fell apart, and so I haven't actually finished this, but I do want to get to this in 2016. That is, that is one of my goals. Next up is Lucretius's The Nature of Things. Um, I picked up this edition because Jean from Bookish Thoughts really recommended it. Um, she liked it because it was in rhyming couplets. I've read a little bit of it. Actually, I've barely read anything. I think I read like the first, first stanza. Um, this is translated by, hang on, I'm gonna have to pull it off screen so I can see this, A.E. Stallings. Um, sorry, my eyesight is not that good that I can see that far away. Um, and yeah, it's it's interesting. I really want to read this because I have read um, and written a paper about the how this was found um, in the 14th century. It was it was re no thir 15th century 1400s. There we go. Centuries always mess me up. Um, it was rediscovered. Um, if you want to read Stephen Greenblatt's The Swerve, that is, I would recommend that if you want to read about the rediscovery of Lucretius's On the Nature of Things. So I do actually want to read the source text. Next up is E.M. Forrester's Maurice. I have read this. I did quite enjoy this. This is probably my least favorite of Forrester's works, so I much prefer Howard's End at a Room with a View, but I did still enjoy it, so I would recommend this. It's also, I think, one of the only passable editions. This is, I bought this when I was starting to, like, reconcile myself to the Black Spine editions. Um, before I was kind of like, oh, they're so boring, they're so plain. And then I was like, no, I actually kind of like them, so. That you can thank that. Uh, one that I haven't read but is obviously on my TBR is Elizabeth Gaskell's Sylvia's Lovers. Um, I picked this up. This is the next Gaskell I will probably read because I have it on my shelf. I still need to read Ruth as well. And I'll probably pick that up in the Black Spine edition or the Oxford Classics, although I kind of like the idea of having them all together. Um, unfortunately, neither this or Ruth were in the Penguin English Library, which kind of broke my heart a little bit because all my other Gaskell works are in Penguin English Library editions, and I'm just like, I want them all to match, but they don't, so. It's also kind of weird, it's a little bit shinier on the spine, I don't know if you guys can see that, um, whereas the other ones are a bit more matte. I have a couple that are shiny, but I don't know. I don't know what makes them shiny and what doesn't. One of my oldest ones in my Black Spine edition is Alexander Dumas' The Black Tulip. This is one of my favorite Dumas books. Um, I have read all of the Musketeer books, all five of them, and I have read The Count of Monte Cristo. Um, I like this over The Count of Monte Cristo. I think it is a similar story to The Count of Monte Cristo, but it is much more cheerful and it is much less long. It's only about 200 pages. Um, yeah, I definitely, definitely would recommend this if you are a fan of his work or if you're just getting into it. It's kind of a interesting, interesting introduction to his works. The first couple chapters, I will warn, are a bit dry. They're very history-based. I found on my second reading of this, I enjoyed them much more because I was much more familiar with Dutch Republic history and Dutch Republic warfare, because um, that is one of the things that I did study in my undergrad. But yes, I do really enjoy that. 
Next up is some Greek fiction. This is Aristophanes, uh, Frogs, and other plays. I've only read Frogs out of this. I read this for the classical read-along that Jean is hosting this month, um, and I thought it was really funny. This was my first introduction to Aristophanes, and I quite enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to reading the other ones, and it is translated by David Barrett, which doesn't really mean much to me, but Jean recommended this edition. Some more Greek fiction. Uh, this is a collection of Kalahore, Daphnis and Chloe, and Letters of Chion, um, which were edited by Helen Morales. Uh, Daphnis and Chloe, I know, is a novel, and I think the other one is too, and they've got a bunch of different translators, which I'm not going to list off, but I was talking about it with Jean when we were talking about reading Greek fiction. And she didn't have this edition, but I found this, and because it contained so many others that she had mentioned that were really good, I decided to pick up this edition. Um, and we talked about the translation before I bought it, so I, I went with this one, because, you know, bind-ups are always good. Economical, that kind of thing. Next up is Dostoevsky's Notes from the Underground and the Double. I read both of these when I was in Toronto this summer. Um, I found them a bit repetitive, reading them back to back, and was probably part of the problem as to why I didn't really enjoy them so much. Um, I did really like Notes from the Underground. The Double, I found, you know, it was a little bit repetitive, reading two Dostoevsky's that both have really similar elements. Um, but this was my first introduction to Dostoevsky, and I'm looking forward to reading more of him. Next up, if you... <laughs> her not new to my channel, this will come as no surprise, but Emile Zola's Therese Reckin. You guys know I love this. I talked about it in my like Be a Good Human tag, which I did a slight cheeky, cheeky turn on it. Um, really enjoy this. Characters are awful and it's wonderful, wonderfully written. I really enjoyed Zola's writing. This is my first introduction to Zola's writing and I'm looking forward to reading more. Next up is one I didn't actually pick for myself. Um, there's a bit of a funny story with this. This is Ida B. Wells' The Light of Truth, Writings of an Anti-Lynching Crusader. Um, I actually was on Penguin's Instagram and they were promoting Apollonius of Rhodes, Jason and the Argonauts. And they were promoting a talk on it. And I kind of left a slightly snarky comment in which I was like, oh, you mean the story where Medea does all the work and Jason gets all the credit? And they were like, you win best comment. Please let us send you the, the copy because it was a new translation. Um, so they sent me that and they also sent me this and one other work, which I will get to at some point. I think it's on this side. Um, I wasn't expecting this. I don't really know much about it, but I am. I will eventually get to it. It's quite a thick work, um, but I am looking forward to reading it. If anybody has any experience with this one, let me know. Um, I've kind of, I haven't been putting it off, but because I haven't picked it for myself, I haven't been like super, it's not super high on my list, but if, if you guys really like it, let me know and I will, I will try and get to it sooner rather than later. One that I read for school, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol and Other Christmas Writings. I've only read A Christmas Carol. I might actually try and get through the other works in this. So you can tell I've got a little, little llama um, tag up there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, I actually wrote a paper comparing A Christmas Carol and Frankenstein, basically talking about how they both warn against isolation as didactic tales. I really enjoyed A Christmas Carol. I, I think it's it's a nice little story, and I'm kind of curious about what the other ones are. I haven't picked this up. I read this for a fantasy lit class, and I really enjoyed it. Next up is one that I've had on my shelf since my first year at university, and that is Sophocles' The Three Theban Plays, which includes Antigone, Oedipus the King, and Oedipus at Colonus. I have read Antigone and Oedipus the King, or as it should be, <laughs> Um, like, Oedipus the King is kind of a weird translation because it's actually in the Greek, it's Oedipus Tyrannus, which, like, a tyrant in Greek means different than it, a tyrant in our time does, but it's more commonly translated as Oedipus the King. Um, I really, really enjoyed Oedipus. I really enjoyed Antigone. I think I like Antigone a bit better than Oedipus, um, mostly because Oedipus is just so well known, whereas Antigone isn't, and I think Antigone goes through a lot more internal struggles than Oedipus does. I should actually get around to reading Oedipus at Colonus, but yes, I do enjoy these. Next up is Wilkie Collins' The Moonstone. I read uh, Wilkie Collins' The Woman in White earlier this year, and I really, it was just this year or last year? At some point I read it, I really enjoyed it, so I added The Moonstone to my collection of books, because that is the next Wilkie Collins I am intending on reading. 
Next up is Sappho's Stung With Love, Poems and Fragments. Uh, this is a collection of Sappho's poetry. I really enjoy this. I read it. Um, Sappho can be a little hard to get into because it is very fragmentary, but I do think it is well worth the effort if you are looking to get into Greek poetry. This is the other book that Penguin sent to me um, on, like, that I wasn't expecting, and that is Nellie Bly, Around the World in 72 Days and Other Writings. Um, once again, I don't really know a lot about this, and as I didn't pick it out for myself, I haven't been like super, super eager to read it. Like, I will read it eventually. It's on my shelf. I have kept it on my shelf for this long, but I don't know much about it. So if you know about it, tell me, and if it's good, I will, I will bump it up on the TBR. I have been leaving a lot of comments, uh, responding to comments today, being like, there are so many books and so little time, I can only read so fast. I almost feel like I need to take another internet sabbatical in order to get through a huge pile of my TBR, but as of right now, that is, doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. Next up is a newer author to me, but I absolutely love, and this is Ray Russell's The Case Against Satan. Uh, it's kind of a precursor to Rosemary's Baby and The Exorcist, and I absolutely adore Ray Russell as an author. Um, as you guys know, I have his collection called Haunted Castles, which is in the Penguin Horror series, um, and immediately after, these came out right before uh, Halloween this year. It was like October 13th or something like that. Um, it was released with two other uh, Black Spine classics, which I haven't picked up yet, but I want them. They're on my wish list. Um, and I really, really enjoyed this. I would highly recommend this if you're interested in kind of spookier books. I'm a big, big fan of that. Next up, which is from my first year uh, Transformations in Ancient Literature class, is Racine's Iphigenia, Phaedra, and Athela. Um, I've read Iphigenia and I've read Phaedra. What we would do is read the classical lit, like the classical text that this was based on. So we read uh, Euripides' Iphigenia at Alice, and we also read Euripides' Hippolytus, which is what Phaedra is based on. Um, and then we would read a like quote unquote modern perspective. Um, we considered modern Shakespeare and up, so for the context of the course, so we read a lot of uh, Racine because he did during his time period a lot of Greek plays got rewritten, so for more modern French audiences that was a really popular thing. So I've read quite a bit of Racine, um, I really enjoyed them. I think he gives his heroines a lot more agency than the classical Greek plays, um, so they are quite enjoyable, I would definitely recommend them. And definitely do like a side-by-side -side comparison and see which ones you like better. Next up is Henri de Balzac's Old Gorite. I probably butchered that last part. Um, I read this when I was in Toronto, it's another one that I just kind of picked up because I, it was a black spine classic and I needed something to read and that's basically, at that point in the trip, I was kind of like, uh, I am out of books to read, I've gone to the used bookstore and I have picked over it so much, I just need something to read. So that's how I got to read this one, I really enjoyed this. Um, I've heard Balzac predated uh, Zola. Zola? Yes, Zola. I almost said Zoya, but no. Zola, and apparently really influenced him. I can definitely see that in this. This is probably one of his most popular books, which I found out after the fact, um, but I really enjoyed it and would definitely recommend it. Next up is one I wouldn't necessarily recommend. This was for a class I took in my last year of university that I just took for fun, in which we looked at Greek myths as text. Um, so this is Pausanias's Guide to Greece, and this is the first edition, um, Central Greece. So this basically, you can tell, you can tell when I had uh, school books because I've got little flags sticking out of them, but this basically goes through different places in uh, Greece and talks about all the local customs and stuff. So this is a really dry read. Unless you're really, really interested in local customs and you're, you're studying classics, I would not recommend this. Um, I have read this in entirety. It's, it's a bit of a dry read. I'm going to be entirely honest with you. Um, what's interesting is that Pausanias is a Greek writer writing for a Latin audience, which I think is really interesting. He's writing for the Emperor Hadrian, um, and he's basically going around and talking about Greek customs, but you can still learn from it how myths kind of, how myths became more local um, and how each locality kind of had their own set of myths. So that was really interesting, but definitely if you are a casual myth person, would not recommend it. And last up is the copy of Apollonius of Rhodes that I've been talking about that Penguin sent me, um, and that is Jason and the Argonauts, or the Argonautica. Um, 
not not my favorite Greek epic. Um, definitely, definitely some misogynistic tendencies. I did write an entire paper on how much Euripides' version Medea is so much better and gives Medea so much more agency than this version, but it is beautifully, beautifully written. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, I would definitely recommend checking it out. But just realize Jason is not a hero. He is kind of an anti-hero. He's kind of whiny and he's not really the best leader for his group, but stuff happens anyways. Um, and it's, I think, I've discussed this in class and I think we all kind of agreed that Apollonius was doing this as kind of like a play on the Greek epic and a play on what um, heroes are. And that is in and of itself interesting. But yes, it is not not my favorite Greek epic, um, but yes. So that is my Penguin Black Spine collection. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys tomorrow for yet another collection video. Because apparently in Canada, for Christmas this year, we are getting tons and tons of rain, which means the lighting is terrible. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you later. Bye.